All right, folks, today we're going to take a look at this network cable tester and multimeter two in one. And uh, I wanted to say I was contacted by my buddy Bob over at CC, and he asked if I would do a video review of this product. And of course, I said yes. So here we are. It is the ET618 for those that are playing along. On the back of the box, there are a ton of specifications that I can't read. So we'll pull up a website where we can see that stuff. And let's take a look and see what's inside. I have not opened this box, so we are enjoying this moment together. These look to be run-of-the-mill multimeter probes. And then it comes with this handy carrying case. We have an instruction manual, and we'll take a look at that. And then we have stuff. We have a Go Light 9 volt battery. I've never heard of Go Light, but I'm sure they're wonderful. We have some sort of USB jack. I'm not sure what that does. Here we have the main body of the device, as we're going to call it. Buttons feel good. Uh, here are some ports on the top where you plug in network cables in order to do some testing. Here are some ports on the bottom for your multimeter probes. And it looks to be about it. And then here is the handheld unit. And this is some sort of probe or tester. You can switch mode here. And uh, you can plug cables in here to do different testing. Oh, it looks like this takes a battery. It's in here. Silly of me to think that it wouldn't. And as you can see, that's easy to get off. <laughs> Silly me, I was going the wrong direction. And it looks like that is what takes the 9-volt battery. Here we have some sort of test lead. I don't know if this is a jumper or some sort of test lead. And then here we have, it looks like a K-type thermal couple. And this is for taking temperature measurements. All right, let's, uh, let's hook this thing up and see what we get. Well, so if you take a look in there, we have a fuse. This looks like a ceramic line fuse. And then we have a lithium ion battery. And that is a 3.71250 milliamp lithium iron battery that must be protected. So that's actually pretty cool. I'm, I'm glad to see that in there. Let's go ahead and do this. And I would imagine that USB cable here is what we use to charge this. So let's get it plugged in and charged and see what happens. All right, we're charging up and uh, let's let this thing charge and we'll come back in a little bit. All right, we got this uh, bad boy charged up. So let's go ahead and turn it on. When it comes on, um, the screen actually looks really good for me. I can read it, but because it's bright, it's not picking up nice by the camera. So I can just hold this button in here. And then we can go to a monochrome unlit display, I think is what they call that. But maybe they don't. Um, the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to test some of the network capabilities that come with it. So um, I just happen to have this network cable sitting here all wrapped up nice and neat. Just by happenstance. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Now, this port is marked length, and it says right here, do not connect uh, PoE, power over Ethernet device, to that particular port. You can put them into this port, which is called, what is it called? Main. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and set this up to do a length test. There we go. And uh, what that is telling us is that this is 2.1 meters in length, which uh, could, could very well be the case. I have no reason not to believe that. It's by plugging in here. And um, you can see you get a reminder right here as to which port you should be plugged into when you pick your different modes. And here it is. It's just scanning through each one of those. And uh, it looks like it's checking everything out. Hey, okay, we will take a pair of scissors or something to this and damage it to see what happens after we do some other tests. Um, when we take a look at this device that comes with it, uh, one of the first things is, is I notice it has a flashlight here. Um, this one has a flashlight that actually will stay on while you're charging it. Uh, you can turn it off. If you've ever been in like network closets and stuff like that, uh, I haven't worked. They tend to be dark places and sometimes you got to look into cracks and stuff. So actually, it's really a, a handy feature. Um, let's go ahead and plug this end in and see what happens. And then what we can see here is, is that this is scanning in a synchronized fashion with what is going on here. And I suppose I can change to test the pairs and you can see them all blinking here and checking to make sure they're okay. Again, we'll test this when we go ahead and we damage the cable. This looks like it can do some other digital and analog testing. 
so if I turn this on, um, there's a volume knob here. It's not seeing anything here. What we'll do is we'll go and we'll put this up against some wire that's being used to transmit data and see if it, uh, if it, if it detects anything. So we are pushing electricity through it, so you can detect that this wire is hot. All right, let, uh, let's damage this wire and see what we get. All right, so I'm not sure which two wires those are, um, but let's go ahead and uh, turn this back on and get in there and run through those same tests and we can see what the difference is going to be. So, there we are plugged in and it doesn't look like it's going to do a, uh, a length test for us. So in order to do this test, we wanna plug in here. I guess to test the integrity of this, what we wanna do is we wanna plug it in here. So what we're seeing here is, is that on this, on this list, one and two are not lighting up. So I'm going to assume this is one and two that, uh, that we cut here. This has one highlighted. And then here we are testing each pair. And so we did cut one and two. You can see that uh, all the rest are showing that we have continuity. Now I wonder what would happen if we just cut, cut another one of these live. Um, let's see if I can get in there and get, the, get, get one of these. There we go. That definitely cut them. So now you can see that we have another failure on here at uh, pairs one and two and pairs three and four. So that's kind of how that works. And that's handy. Uh, what you can do with this is that you can plug this in at one end of your coax. I'm sorry, of your cat five cable. Let's say you have a, a wire that runs through your house or through your office or something like that. You can plug this in at your desk and then you can go plug this in at the patch panel and you can test your, your cable that way uh, for integrity. Which is, uh, which is really cool that it does that. All right, well, let's come back and take a look at some of the other things this meter does. So I wanted to talk a couple minutes about the instruction manual that comes with the meter, this thing right here. And right behind me, you can see a, uh, a photo that I took of it. The instruction manual, I would say, is uh, average to slightly above average. Uh, what you have to realize is this device was manufactured in China and likely the instruction manual is not written by a native English speaker. So you'll get a little tongue tied as you go through and read some of the stuff. But uh, if you pay attention, you should be able to figure it out. One thing I'll say is, is that the diagrams in the manuals you can see here is an example of one. I feel they're pretty good and uh, they certainly help with that. So uh, thumbs up on the manual. All right, folks, so we continue to test this device out. Let me go ahead and turn it on. Let me go ahead and turn the backlight off. What I have is it's connected up to this Unity, it's a UTP 1305 uh, benchtop power supply. And I just have some banana plugs that come out of the power supply here. You can see them on either side of the screen that plug into the device here. So let me go ahead and set the device for, right now it's set for AC voltage. Let's go ahead and hit that. Now we're set for DC voltage. And the power supply is set for 12 volts. So let me go ahead and turn that on. And then you can see this is reading 11.95, which is within spec if the Unity power supply was 100% accurate at uh, 12 volts, which I don't know. So let's go ahead and mess with it, right? That's what we like to do. Let's turn it up to, we went a little higher than I thought. So we'll go to 25. So now we're at 25 volts on the Unity, uh, which is a little bit more than double, and we're at 2.49. So for this type of benchtop type stuff or stuff you'd be doing in the network closet, uh, I think you'd be fine with this. Um, I'm not necessarily 100% sure I would use it on something like mains power or mains voltage, but I don't think that uh, most folks would be doing that. So let's go ahead and set this back to 12. And then what we'll do is we'll test the amperage. So in order to do this, I need to take this red plug out and plug it in over here. Um, you can see here this says 10 amps max. So this is where your current is measured. And I need to go in here and change it to a current measurement. Okay, and here we are set for DC amps. 
And it's reading point two, which is exactly what you should see here on the power supply. So the voltage dropped because it's not taking much voltage to push two amps to this because we don't have any resistance. Um, let me go over here and change the current. Uh, and this only goes to about three amps, if I remember correctly. So we're not going to be able to test much beyond that. But uh, what we can do is we can test and see. Oops, I wanted to go down here. We can test and see how granular it is. So you can see that's pretty much uh, spot on. All right, let's continue to proceed with the test. Thanks, everybody. Okay, right now the meter is registering as open, and that is because we have it set on its temperature reading. So what I've done is I've just unfolded the, uh, this is called a thermal couple, and uh, I believe it is a K-type. And that has to do with the way that it uses uh, temperature to manipulate this probe here. I don't know, it's not really a probe, it's really just the end of a wire. Um, anyhow, what it's showing right now is 16 degrees Celsius, which would be lower 60 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which is about what it is in the ham shack. And uh, this test is nothing too advanced. I can just go ahead and I can pinch this and you can see that go up as I do that. And then uh, hopefully I won't burn the house down. You know, you're not supposed to play with lighters and matches. But uh, we should see that start to start to skyrocket. There we go. So there we go. Uh, pretty handy feature. I don't know if everybody needs one or not. Uh, again, if you're working in like a network uh, closet or with network equipment, you can maybe put this into some sort of router or switch or piece of gear or something like that and get an ambient temperature reading. Um, and that might help you out uh, for whatever reason. Uh, I do work in IT. And as a matter of fact, we had a building suffer a power outage uh, last night. And one of the things that we were worried about is the network closet that has a server, router, switches, hubs, some telephony equipment in there. And uh, we were worried about the, uh, the temperature. All right, well, let's keep testing. All right, so I have the multimeter probes connected, and uh, these are what you would expect for run-of-the-mill probes. They're not anything like a Probe Master Pro, but these are what you get with your average multimeters. Um, these are not silicone. They're probably PVC coated, so they have some memory. They're not overly flexible, but I think that's okay. Uh, these probes do come with shrouds uh, should you need to use them. I always take them off. And there you are uh, seeing some continuity from a continuity test. I would like that to be a little bit more consistent in terms of the beep. But uh, let's go ahead and test a couple of other things. What I have here is just a little breadboard and I just have some components on here. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a quick resistance test on this resistor. And uh, this is an auto ranging meter, so it's taken a little bit of time. Let me just go ahead and do this. It's taken a little bit of time to go ahead and read that. And we're coming in close. So this, what we should be getting here is around 1,000 ohms or one kilo ohm. And it looks like that's about where we ended. Also has a function for measuring diodes and testing forward uh, voltage on a diode. Let's see if we can find that. There we go. So we're going to start with red and work our way all the way down to white, which you can probably barely see. So we're getting a reading there and lighting up the diode. Let's go with yellow. Same thing, but the uh, we're not getting we're not getting a forward voltage reading. Let's try green. So what's happening here is is that this puts enough electricity forward to uh, highlight this diode, but after red, which is a lower power diode, we're not getting any forward voltage past that. So one of the things that we can do to test this is that we can actually measure the voltage that this is putting out. So let's do that real quick. So here we have another meter and that is set up to measure DC voltage. So let me just go ahead and put this in here. And then you can see what it puts forward when it goes and measures diode is 2.9 volts. Um, and what you're going to need is a little bit more than that to test these. Now, you can test other diodes that don't require some of the energy to light up like that, uh, maybe lower power requirement diodes, and you should be okay. But I just wanted to point that out. Here is the Amazon link, and I'll include this below where you can go and you can pick this up if, uh, if you're interested. You can see right now it is selling for $74.99, and you got a picture here. Oh, there's... You have a picture here of all the different uh, things that come with it. I think we've taken a look at all of that. 
Uh, you can come down here you can read more about this item and you can continue to scroll down and see some more specifications on it if that's something that you're interested in. All right, folks, I think that's going to wrap it up. Uh, in terms of this device, if testing networking cables and things like that are something that uh, is a requirement for you, then this might be something that, uh, that you want to check out. In terms of a multimeter, it's a functional multimeter, but there are other ones that are out on the market that you may want to check or compare to. In terms of both, I don't see a whole lot of those. That doesn't mean they don't exist. It just means I don't see a whole lot of them. So if you're looking for a single device to do some multimeter work and network uh, cable testing, check it out. All right, thanks everybody for watching and thanks to CC for sending me this device for my consideration.